ICU News at 12. I'm Rachel Bednarik. And I'm Brad Zopo. Thanks for joining us. Today the reports of a crash in downtown Erie where the man supposedly has Weber syndrome and drove straight into a tree. Weber syndrome is a form of a stroke characterized by the presence of ipsilateral ocular motor nerve palsy and contralateral hemiparesis. So basically he had a stroke in his midbrain. And now we go to Sandra Blude at the hospital for the report. Okay, um, I'm here at UPMC Hammett where the patient the patient's doctor, Dr. Rodriguez. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about how this syndrome caused this crash? Of course. The most common and basic signs of Weber syndrome is confusion, as overall weakness in the right or left side of the body, and sudden loss of consciousness, which is what happened to this man while he was driving. With that said, further signs can go into even deeper syndrome. Different parts of the brain are affected, such as the substantia niagara, which causes a movement disorder in the contralateral body, the cortical spinal fibers, which affect the upper motor neuron, the cortical bulbar tract, which affects his lower facial muscles, as well as the ocular motor nerve fibers that cause the ocular nerve palsy that the reporter suggested before, and a drooping eyelid, as well as a fixed pupil pointed down and out, which is the leading sign of what, ac what actually happened to this drive. Okay, so now, what were the injuries that were sustained? Well, due to his vehicular incident, he had a lot of lacerations and contusions, which is normal to see. But um, we ran an MRI on him just to double check for all of these injuries. And like we said before, he does have Weber syndrome. We had to double check on that. And he definitely had all the signs and symptoms that I had listed just before. So we just have to keep, um, keep on him and just pursue a regular treatment of a stroke, and he should be fine. So he's going to be okay. We sure hope so. Back to you guys. Now we're here with Nana Berry, and um, so did you know that he had Weber's syndrome? No, I, I, I didn't see any symptoms. I mean, his, his eye was a little bit droopy. Uh, I told him to stop drinking, and he was looking at me, his eye, his pupil, very dilated. I wasn't sure what was going on. I said to him, go see a doctor. He was running into things for the past couple of days, but he said, it's fine, I'm fine, Grandma. I don't need, I, I don't need anyone, I don't need to see anyone. And I, I, I didn't know what to do. I just said, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so what I got from the doctor is that this is genetic. Has anyone in your family had this syndrome? Did you say Weber's? Weber's syndrome, ma'am. Oh, right. yeah, my third husband, Roger. Rest in peace, Rog. He did have this, Weber's, Weber's syndrome. Yeah, yeah, now that I think of it, he was always hitting the walls and always had a droopy eye. I thought it was just him, to be honest. Died of Weber's syndrome. <laughs> here to see you. Uh, How are you feeling? I'm good, Grandma. Good. You're doing well. You're doing very well. He's going to make it. here back with Dr. Rodriguez. Now, what are the treatments for this syndrome? We're going to treat this like a basic stroke patient. So he's going to be going through a lot of physical therapy, a lot of occupational therapy as well. Um, strengthening his mobility will be key and a lot of patience, especially from grandma. We've seen a lack of patience with her. She needs to be patient with him because it's going to be slow and steady recovery for him. Let's hope that he doesn't end up like Roger. Back to you. Thank you, Sammy. 
Tune in at 5 o'clock for our nightly news. Stay classy, Gannon. Weeks later. You start your treatment. You want to step up for me? We're going to get you on the walker. Grandma, we're going to need you for some motivation over Good here. Good work, son. All right, just keep in your square nice and easy. Keep your feet up. How's it feeling so far? Oh, you're doing good. Different? You're doing very good. Look good. Very good. A little more motivation, Grandma. That'd be keep great. Keep going. Keep going. Great job. You want to try to turn? I'm going to go this way. Nice and easy. Bring it around. How's it feeling that's on that good, left that's side? That's good. That's good. Keep that It's a little tight. It's a little tight. That's good. It's expected. Nice and easy. You're doing great. Perfect. Let's get you back to that wheelchair because I know how much fun you have with that. Go, go, go! Good job, Grandma. Great motivation. Roger! And we're back to the wheelchair. We're going to take it nice and easy. Straight down. Great job. Good job, Grandma. Yep, good work, son. Two hours later. Doctors TV show, 4MDs, bringing you your daily dose of the latest medical information and answering your most important health questions. Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory Helms. I'm Dr. Addison Montgomery. And I'm Dr. Megan Drew. I'm Dr. Christina Yang, and welcome to Doctors. Well, welcome back to the Doctors. As I'm sure you heard, there was recently a car accident in downtown Erie earlier today. And it's suspected, suspected that the individual suffered from Weber syndrome. Weber syndrome, isn't there a case next to that? Yes. When thinking of Weber syndrome, most people usually think of Sturge Weber syndrome, which is where the child has a large birthmark on his face or even his head. It's a rare disorder that can affect the child's skin, eyes, and nervous system. But the individual we're going to talk about did not have this particular form. Instead, he had alternating hemiplegia, which is also known as Weber syndrome. Thomas misunderstanding. Oh, okay, of course. Alternating hemiplegia is a neurological disorder that usually develops during childhood and involves temporary paralysis of one side of the body. Exactly. In this case, we heard that the patient may have experienced this paralysis, as well as a dilated pupil and a droopy eyelid, which caused the crash. Scary. Thank goodness he was all right. It is obvious that the two main things that happen in Weber syndrome happen to this individual. Oculomotor nerve palsy and contralateral hemiplegia. No idea what that is, you say. We can help explain it to you a little easier. Oculomotor nerve palsy results from a lesion in the oculomotor motor cranial nerve. The involved eye is usually deviated down and out, and there may also be partial or complete ptosis which is a drooping eyelid. So alternating or contralateral hemiplegia is a neurological disorder that develops in children at a young age. The main symptom is reoccurring episodes of paralysis that involve one or even both sides of the body. It can occur at all different times, and it can be very brief or last a long time. You never really know. So as suspected, the individual in this car accident had both of these symptoms. His eye had been droopy and dilated for the last few days, and the likelihood of, likelihood of him suffering from an attack of hemiplegia is very likely. This is an actual MRI. And in this MRI, I will first draw an outline of the midbrain. 
So let's start here. This is the mid vein. These are the cerebral peduncles. You have the tegmentum, then you have the tectum. Okay. So this is the this is the midbrain. You have the third nerve nuclei somewhere around this area. So let's say those are the third nerve nuclei. The third nerves anteriorly and the fascicle exits here so you have the third nerve coming out you have the corticospinal tracts in this region this brown colored region you have the corticospinal tracts around this area now let's say that this person has a stroke so the stroke affects the anterior part so I'll draw the stroke here now and this is the stroke. So you have a stroke. The, in this, this is the right side now. This is the left side. The stroke is on the right side. So you will have a right third nerve palsy and a left hemiparesis. This is all that is to Weber syndrome. I hope you enjoyed the talk. I will see you soon. This episode of Doctors. Tune in next week for our episode on micropenises. <laughs> Can we please get her the walker? Yeah. Like, have him there. Like, we like, still have like, there's also, like, bait. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't want him taking grandma's walker. from a lesion in the oculomotor cranial nerve. The involved eye is usually deviated down and out, and there may also be partial or complete ptosis. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on Doctors. Tune in next week for our talk on micro <laughs>